Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health, resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about things you need to know to help with the financial management of your operation and much, much more. We have Joe Kearns from Partners for Production Agriculture here, and you're going to enjoy this one a lot. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and I'm here with Joe Kearns. He's the president for Partners for Production Agriculture. And we're here in Ames, Iowa. We do a lot with Iowa State. We do, we do a lot. We're, we're cyclones. Yes, we are. And um, Joe's been one of those people that has welcomed me back to the community, um, has been a great partner and ally uh, here in agriculture for so many people beyond Iowa. Um, just fun to have you on the show. Thank, thanks for having me today, Dan. <laughs> it's gonna be great. So. Tell us what Partners for Production Agriculture do. So uh, PFP Ag started off uh, back in 2008. I'd had a career in the corporate agricultural sector and, and had a lot of experiences. Uh, it got to a point in my career where it was time to do something different. And so we formed the entity. It was called Kearns & Associates back then. It's gone through a couple of iterations. Uh, but it was formed in order to bring the things, the good disciplines of risk management back to a, a broader subset that we were working with at that time. Um, uh, we started off with, and I mean this literally, is with enough Campbell's soup and peanut butter that in case it didn't work that it was not going to starve to death and, and that is the truth uh, but but took off and uh, started to to engage with agricultural producers specifically in the livestock markets throughout the United States uh, and it, it, it's been successful we've got 18 of us now uh, based out of Ames Iowa loosely uh, functional of uh, a collection of risk managers that have various disciplines we've got meat traders we've got folks that spent their years on the Chicago Board of Trade and we even saved three people from the dearth of, of existence, we took them out of the packing industry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the experience and the people that you brought yeah. in is just unbelievable. Tell me a little bit about what producers or, you know, when you work with a producer, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, that you do? How about this? Let's start what we don't do. We are not veterinarians. And so, and so, hey, 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 we leave that to the professional well, side the of it. First uh, <laughs> risk management slash ag economist people I've met that knows they're not a veterinarian. We are, we are not veterinarians <laughs> and we're not nutritionists, although we do infringe on that every once in a while, just, just because we have to, of the economics involved. Uh, but when we take a look at the scope of an operation, their production has to be within some realm of acceptability. We, we're not magic. We're not miracle makers. And if you you don't have good production, uh, I can't save you. If you've got good production and the herdsmen that we work with are generally so sincere and they've grown up in the industry and the risk management, the financial side of it is something that's probably escaped them, that they didn't learn from their fathers because they didn't have to. And that's where we can step in and start to provide those parameters to model a forward look of profitability. Can I make this operation work? And even to the point of kind of teasing this out a little bit, uh, we've got a patent on something called a stochastic model which if you say it long enough, it makes you sound really intelligent. And all we're really doing is taking very, uh, taking a distribution around given variables and then combining that with the market factors. So, so before we make a decision to breed an animal, we've got a confidence interval of profitability somewhere down the road when that animal is going to be marketed. Those are the type of solutions that we like bringing that, that are probably not at the avail of most producers on their own. And, and, and we've, uh, uh, we've been successful. It's been a lot of fun because we get to work with agriculture. 
agriculture and that how can that not be fun yeah and that's one thing i've noticed all the things of working with you is that you really do put the farmer and the rancher first yeah yeah you you have to i mean it's their life it's their livelihood it's their lifeblood it's their heritage the test i get goosebumps talking about this stuff uh we'll, we'll put the plane in the air tomorrow to go out to visit producers that are just salt of the earth i love being with them and i love watching them succeed and being a integral role in their success perfect thank you we're going to take a break and we come back more with joe kearns from partners for production agriculture Nasalgen 3 is a new three-way intranasal BRD vaccine that offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, BRSV, and PI3. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose new Nasalgen 3 PMH, the first and only five-way intranasal vaccine on the market. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Time is money on the farm, and your cows are less productive when they're stressed. The Alertus on-farm test from IDEX allows you to quickly test cow side and identify open or pregnant cows within minutes on your schedule in the parlor, barn, or chute. It's more efficient for your farm, very simple to use, and puts you in control. With minimal training and reliable, fast results, sample-based pregnancy testing is better for beef and dairy producers. Learn more at idex.com slash talk. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, Feed it with a tube or a nipple and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Joe Kearns. He's the president for Partners for Production Agriculture here in Ames, Iowa. We both do a lot of work with Iowa State University and, and we get to work with farmers and ranchers every day. But let's jump into some of the markets uh, sure. side and what you're seeing. Sure. So let's start with the input side, which, which impacts every single species that we're going to work with within animal ag. Uh, and we've got a great transition that's going on. And, and when I say great, I don't mean it's good as in, uh, as in severe transition going on uh, in the atmosphere as we are converting from a La Nina to an El Nino. And your listeners and, and viewers are probably well aware that the weather's been a bit volatile lately. Yeah. And if you've been on an American Airlines flight, they have a tough time finding clean air uh, uh, for the last six weeks or so as we start this transition. Uh, we've been in an extended La Nina period. They normally last uh, a year, maybe two, and this one's been three plus years. And so the, the sharp nature of these transitions uh, is being characterized by a volatile atmosphere. That's gonna bring more rain to the plain states. That's almost a given, and that's gotta be good news for your farmers and ranchers. The big question is when, and, and the debate is, does it occur in March or does it occur in June? And so the prospects for the agronomic side, getting the crop in the ground, on a timely manner hinge on that. If we get a, 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 an abundance of rain in March where we can't turn wheels, we're going to be in a world of hurt one right. more time, right? Uh, if we get the crop in, it, it's, it gets off to a decent start and the rain start to flow on or about June 1st, you know what that's called? Record yields. Yep. And, and, then, and that's something I think we're all looking forward to. I give a lot of credit to the agronomic scientists uh, in, in, in our industry is if you take a look at the last, I'll call it the last four years of growing conditions, have not been kept and fantastic, but yet we still churn out these 173, 175 bushel yields. 
what happens when we actually get a good year. And this could be the year. I think we're going to be in a, a very uh, uh, important swing on or about June 1st. We will know whether or not we've got that crop in the ground and that transition is going to occur to a more rainy type of situation that helps out the Midwestern farmer with corn and soy. It also helps out the range pasture ground uh, with an abundance of rain to keep those animals uh, uh, in, a, in a, an outdoor reproductive type of mode. So uh, yeah. the implications to the market are indexed to that, uh, that if we start to rebuild the herd and pull some heifers back out of the feedlot, that's going to cause a shortage, obviously, in the beef supply as we get into the later summer. And that probably offers an opportunity for beef is going to be the absolute leader in any of price appreciation that we see and possibly dragging some pork and even poultry along with it with the price appreciation with the substitution. Uh, we've seen the uh, the retail industry that has taken more than their fair share of margin here uh, post COVID and, uh, and not to be completely cruel uh, to that industry, but they've seen cost increases from everything from all Nestle products to all Coca-Cola products. They're unable to pass along these increase in egg prices to the balance of the industry. And so they're looking for some place and they found it in the meat case. And I think that it's uh, it's incumbent upon for us for profitability that a lot more of that retail dollar makes it back into our pockets. And perhaps we've got an environment that is beginning to structure in that manner. Well, it's, it's, it's great to hear, mm -hmm. you know, if we can, if we can uh, have the beef demand, you know, we're going to eat whatever we produce. Yes, sir. And so, so pulling beef forward and, and uh, a little cheaper grain never, never hurt in feeding yep. cattle. Yep. So uh, we got about 30 seconds. Uh, any uh, parting words on on inputs or, or things for people to think about? Um, let's talk, we always want to know about what the price is and when it occurs. And though those two things generally don't coincide real well, I would take a look at my input prices on June 1st and make a, a very sharp decision at that point in time of determining whether or not that we've seen that transition fully into this, uh, right. uh La Nina to El Nino. Uh, and then that's also going to help me with my marketing side about the retention of heifers and what that's going to mean for later into the year of whether or not I'm going to be able to pull those back out of the feedlot and, and and uh, kind of shorten up the supply of beef to the retail side. Perfect. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Joe Kearns. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple. You fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, Feed it with a tube or a nipple and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. For over 12 years, Dr. Dan has teamed up with veterinarians around the globe to bring timely, relevant cattle health and performance opportunities to you in an easygoing message. Coming up on the next Doc Talk. We're going to talk about cattle handling facilities and specifically crowding tubs or crowding boxes to get cattle from the alley into the snake and into the chute, and you're gonna enjoy this one a lot. Make sure to tune in Mondays, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific on RFD-TV. And we'll see you down the road. We are a start to finish yard, bring them in at 500 pounds and finish them out to 14 to 1,500 pounds. Max capacity is about 15,000. We begin with the end in mind, which that means it starts from day one coming off the truck. Heard all sorts of stuff about the, the generics coming out from you know a few different companies here and there, but we started working with Bimita. What I like about working with Bimita is our rep. You know, he's, he seems like he's just a, one of us. Kind of, he knows he's been in the cattle feeding industry for a long time. He understands where we're coming from what goes on in the feed yard. So we started implementing Macrosin last July and uh, we're using it as our, our first pole treatment. The, the data shows that the success rates on BRD, you know, they're equivalent to the other macro lights that we were, we were using, you know. We just feel fortunate enough, I guess, to get our hands on it and it, it works great for us for a, you know, first pole treatment what really jumped out to us working with Bimita, meeting with the rep. Mackerson's affordable. We finally got a product that everybody can afford. 
We try to do the little things right, whether it's from low stress cattle handling, animal welfare, how we work with the cattle every single day. You know, that's something we really focus on, but when you've got a product like a Macrosyn, it's just another assurance protecting you, controlling your BRD from what stressors are thrown out there or what Mother Nature is going to bring to you. This industry, it, it takes everybody, uh, whether it's working with the nutritionist, it's cowboys working with the veterinarians, everybody plays a part and uh, we expect them to do their jobs but also we expect you know the the drugs or what we put into the cattle to do their job too and I think these Bimeda products they're proven that they're doing the job for us. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring. Shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Joe Kearns. He is the president of Partners for Production Agriculture. And I, I've, I've been around people that are in demand before and then I met Joe. Um, to get him to sit here with us is a is special, special for me, and it should be special for y'all because he is all across this country and is he works his tail off for, for so many people and we're very thankful. So thanks for being here. Um, now, let's, you know, when someone picks up the phone and calls you, mm -hmm. one of our ranchers, one of our farmers, veterinarians, whatever, what are, you know, if you were guiding them towards a couple of deliverables that, that you help with, what, where do you start? Well, the, the first thing we do is we put together a pro forma of what their production is and what their decisions have been to date, and then start to model that out on, a, on an annual basis or as far as the, the markets can take us. Uh, and then from there, we would start to, to uh, assess where my risk lies, what are my capital requirements for positions, and more than likely start to uh, uh, place some risk management tools. And I think right now is a very fine time to do so. I'm a huge fan of options in the grain because of what we talked about on the last segment, because I think that all you really need to do is you get to June 1st and your June 1st inflection point will tell you everything you need to know for the rest of the crop year and that's that's kind of a privilege that we have and options are are well set up for that from the revenue side of it we can do futures we can do options but uh, our first go-to is the insurance products and and let me let me back up if, if your audience is not familiar with those yeah we is, need to start basically from from all the right, so let, let's start there and so in 2020 uh, the then Trump administration had rolled out to us an, an increase in in, in the funding to offset insurance premiums. And this had been done two years previous and the dairy industry had found a, a, a very high level of success. And the pork and the beef industries were uh, uh, the beneficiaries in 2020. If you think back to that time frame, though, we were number one, we were not very profitable as an industry. And one of our biggest concerns was uh, how do I get very large animals out of my barn as quickly as possible? We were not worried about risk management at that point. We were in survival mode. Fast forward here a little bit, uh, the LGM product and the L LRP, which are uh, two programs administered by the USDA, by the Risk Management Agency, the same folks that administer crop insurance, it is the same entity that is now doing livestock insurance. And so you've got a subsidy that comes over top of whatever the cost would be. It's based on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so you do have a viable exchange, and then those products are subsidized to a point where a farmer or a rancher has to look at them first. They're, they're by far the, the most economical component that we have in our risk management arsenal. I think a couple of beauties about the programs, they've got their little idiosyncrasies, but it's a relatively easy program to get involved with. It does not have a whole lot of paperwork. It's a two-page form, um, uh, very minimal. And the beauty is you don't pay for any of the coverage until you market the animals. And so there's not a great oh. big margin call that comes along with it. And you wait until you've got that revenue from the animal that if, if there is a payment due to the government, which if there's a payment due to the government, it means that the price went up. That's not all bad. Not right, all bad. right. That means you made money. You made money, and, right. Yeah. And you've got the insurance, uh, 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 or you've got the money to pay the insurance bill at that point in time. So they're very attractive programs, Dan. Uh, we encourage everyone to become educated with it. And we have found a niche and, and really, really enjoy employing those for the benefit of the farmers and ranchers we work with. Yeah, so let's take a break. And when we come back, you can talk a little bit about how you, you interweave the insurance with the risk management 
to, to even help producers more. Absolutely. It's outstanding. This is Joe Kearns with Partners for Production Agriculture. You're watching Doc Talk, and we'll be right back. I'm Dr. Les Anderson. I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The Alertus on Farm Test has the opportunity to completely change the industry. A producer is enabled and empowered to be able to take the sample and run the test or tests at their leisure without scheduling anybody. And honestly, reproduction is the thing that we measure the least, and it's the thing that dictates profitability the most. The Alertus on Farm Test will help us to identify cows that get pregnant early. It'll improve our efficiency tenfold. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stockers' maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Joe Kearns. He is the president of Partners for Production Agriculture, a company that uh, does a lot of work with, with farmers, ranchers, uh, different people in agriculture all around the world um, and we're lucky to get him here and we want to take this last segment to just kind of wrap up the the LRP uh, discussion or the insurance yes. discussion on on what those two different programs are sure sure and let's uh, let, let's tease those out LRP stands for livestock revenue protection and it's just what it sounds like this is a hedge against my sale so so it is uh, if you're if your audience is familiar with puts on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange it is a subsidized put and it's available for ranchers for Absolutely. calves coming off the ranch it's not just a, a cattle feeding that's program. Correct. And so we have 750,000 ranchers out there yes. that could be protecting their calf crop. Right. And three of them are doing so right now. Right. <laughs> so it's, 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 this is, this is something big folks and, and getting hooked in with somebody like Joe and partners for production agriculture is imperative to, to good years and bad years all alike. That's correct. So we can protect that animal as a feeder or when it's in the finishing stage, one way or the other. Uh, the LGM product takes into consideration, it's called gross margin, a livestock gross margin, the revenue side in relation to my, to my input costs. And gotcha. so it truly becomes a margin management tool that's, uh, that's very effective. They both have their application at different times. We model which one is, quote, the best deal all the time for the producers that we get to work with. Um, and one piece that I need to interject here is that in May of last year, we joined forces with a company called EverAg. We needed the technology that they had. Is uh, they, they were very well experienced in these programs and had, had administered them in the dairy industry. Bringing those platforms back to our livestock producers was a key component to make us more effective. So from a selfish side of it, uh, I couldn't be happier with how it's all played out. It, it's, been, it's been a really, really good relationship in, in providing that technology to our fundamental analysis. Um, uh, I, I would share that we've got folk that have worked for years on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and every day go by and evaluate all the all the Greek words that you hated in college of, of how to go about <laughs> this, the, the thetas, the gammas, the deltas, all of this. Uh, we've got a group that knows the math behind it. And so it's, again, it's not magic. I said that before, that we're not magicians, mind you. Uh, we do do pretty well with numbers and are able to, to be of assistance to the farmers and ranchers we work with. Excellent. Excellent. Talk to me about ESG and sustainability and how that weaves its sure. way into this. Sure. And ESG is kind of the, a, a new term to, to many. It uh, stands for environmental, social, and governance uh, policies, largely instituted by uh, big companies that, that want to make sure they're doing the right thing for the environment as well as the shareholder. Now, those of us that have a little bit of independence might shun that somewhat and say, you know, I want nothing to do with that. And I would, I would be very cautious of, of uh, that approach is uh, the governmental 
funding coming toward that, whether it's carbon credits that, that, that are going to hit. We're going to hit mainland U, U.S. agriculture right in the heart with opportunity completely unintended. We think we're going to decarbonize the world. The truth of the matter is there's going to be an abundance of opportunity that come at us. Uh, the, the ESG companies that embrace it trade at a higher profile. That's their interest in doing so. The huge beneficiaries are those of us in animal agriculture that just by the nature of our operations are sequestering carbon on a daily basis. It's outstanding. So um, lots to, to uncover or unwind here, but you need to work with risk management folks. You need to, on the cow-calf ranch and, and feeder, feedlot level, uh, get uh, well-versed in insurance and, and work with somebody like Joe and his group. Um, just, I, I, we're leaving, we can't leave the money on the table. That's correct. Correct, it, yes. It's, it's just, it, we, it's, there's a lot to learn here. But um, thanks for being on the show. This is fun. Thank you very much for having me. This is fun. <laughs> it's Thank always you. fun. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. And if you want to know more about what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Joe Kearns from Ames, Iowa, and we'll see you down the road. Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. By integrating the comprehensive animal health product portfolio of Merck Animal Health with the innovative technologies of all flex livestock intelligence, we are shaping the future of animal health resulting in more effective solutions and healthier animals.